Now that we've discussed the epsilon delta definition of the limit of a function, which I've put here, and I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing this definition, we're going to prove a very useful theorem connecting the limit of a function to the limit of a sequence, which will allow us to use many of the results we've proven about sequences in discussions about functional limits. And here's a theorem we'll be proving. If f is a function mapping some subset of the reals, a, to the reals, and c is a limit point of that domain, a, then the limit of the function as x approaches that limit point c is equal to l if and only if the sequence of the function's values evaluated at the terms of the sequence a, n, converges to L for every sequence AN in A, where AN converges to C and none of its terms are equal to the limit point C. So the idea of this sequence is that if we have a function mapping some subset of the reals A to the reals, and then we have a sequence that converges to this limit point C, and the sequence is entirely contained in the domain, and no term of the sequence is equal to the limit point C, then the sequence of those terms images under the function will converge to L if and only if the function's limit actually is L. These two things are equivalent. All right, so for the first direction of this proof, we're going to assume that the limit of the function as x approaches C is L, and then we'll prove the part about all of the sequences. In the second direction, of course, we will assume the sequence part of this theorem and prove that implies the limit of the function is actually L. So for this forward direction of the proof, we'll assume the limit of the function as x approaches C is equal to L, and then we'll take an arbitrary sequence a n in the domain a that converges to c and with none of its terms equaling the limit point c. Then what we need to show is that the sequence of images of terms of the sequence a n under the function f converges to l. So this is a sequence convergence proof. We're proving that this sequence of the function's values converges to L. So like any sequence convergence proof, we begin by taking an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. Now an epsilon greater than zero is also a part of the functional limit definition, as we see up here. And we know that our function f of x has a limit of L as x approaches c. So this definition applies, which means for this epsilon greater than zero, by definition of a functional limit, we know that there exists a delta greater than zero, so that for all values x from the domain that are within delta of c, for all those domain values, their images under the function f of x must be within epsilon of the limit l. In essence, this means that for elements of the domain that are sufficiently close to the limit point c, the function is guaranteed to be within epsilon of the limit l. But of course, we know that this sequence, a n, does get arbitrarily close to c, and all terms of the sequence are in the domain. So we can consider these terms of the sequence to be like numbers from the domain that are arbitrarily close to c and thus force the function to get arbitrarily close to the limit l. So in the same way that we can take domain values x that have some distance from c but are within delta of c, since the sequence a n converges to c, we can take terms of a n that have the same property. They have some distance from c, but they are within delta of c. We know that all terms of the sequence, after a certain point, must satisfy this. And since all terms of a n, after the nth term, satisfy this, that must mean that all terms of f of a n must be within epsilon of the limit l which by definition means that f of a n converges to l. One more time, we begin a sequence convergence proof by taking epsilon greater than zero. But then, since we already know that our function as x approaches c has a limit of l, that means for any epsilon greater than zero, there must exist a positive delta so that for all numbers x from the domain that are within delta of c, the function's values for those domain numbers 
must be within epsilon of the limit L. But since our sequence AN comes from the domain and converges to C, that sequence eventually just consists of terms of the domain of the function that are within delta of C. And so certainly those function values f of an will again be within epsilon of the limit because the terms of this sequence after the big nth term are just domain values that are within delta of C. That's all they are. So certainly the function's values have to be within epsilon of L. And so by definition, the sequence f of an converges to L. That completes the four direction of the proof. So we can move on now to the second direction, where we assume that for every sequence an in the function's domain A, where an converges to C and none of its terms are equal to C, the sequence of the images under F converges to L. We want to show that this implies the limit of the function as X approaches C is indeed equal to L. But we're going to do this one by contradiction. So we'll begin by supposing for contradiction that the limit of the function as X approaches C is not in fact equal to L. So considering the definition of a functional limit carefully, we need to negate this definition for our contradiction assumption. One of the important things in this definition is the there exists a positive delta. Since we're assuming that our function does not have this limit, in the negation of this, we're going to have a for every delta. So let's go down to that contradiction assumption and the resulting negation of the functional limit definition. If f of x does not have this limit of L, that means there exists some epsilon greater than zero so that for all positive deltas, there exists an x in the domain of the function that is within delta of the limit point C, but where the image of x is not within epsilon of the limit L. So we know there exists this positive epsilon so that no matter how close we get to the limit point C, there will be numbers in the domain that are that close, but whose images under the function are not within epsilon of L. That's what it means for this function to not have a limit equal to L as X approaches C. How we're going to use this is as follows. We have this epsilon greater than zero for which we know the following is true. So we're going to take a sequence of deltas that converges to zero and for each one of those deltas, we'll be able to take some x from the domain satisfying this. And as a result, we'll construct a sequence of terms that converges to C, but whose images will all fail to be within epsilon of L. Thus, we'll have a sequence that defies the original assumption. So here's our simple sequence of deltas that converges to zero. We're saying delta n equals one over n. This is going to allow us to take values from the domain that get closer and closer and closer to this limit point C. So considering this sequence of deltas, we know that for each delta n, by this definition that we just talked about, there has to exist an xn in the domain that is within delta n of C, but for which the image of this xn is not within epsilon of L. Once again, this is a direct consequence of the contradiction assumption. We assume that the function as x approaches c does not have a limit of L. And by definition, that means this, what we went over a minute ago. But that implies that this is true. This follows directly from the contradiction assumption. No matter how close we get to the limit point c, no matter how far out we go in this sequence of delta n's, there will be numbers xn from the domain that are that close to C, but for which their image under the function is not within epsilon of L. And that means the sequence of the images of these numbers from the domain cannot possibly converge to L because every single one of them, every single xn fails to have an image that's within epsilon of L. So certainly f of xn does not converge to L. Let's make sure to clarify that this sequence of terms xn from the domain A 
does satisfy our hypothesis. It is a sequence that our hypothesis applies to, which would mean that the sequence of its images under the function converges to L. It is a sequence our hypothesis applies to because each xn is from the domain A, so the whole sequence is in A. We also know that xn converges to C and that each xn is not equal to C. We know the sequence converges to C because each xn is within one over n of c, so their distances from c will approach zero, it certainly converges to c. And we know that each xn is not equal to c because the xn's come from the negation of the definition of a functional limit, which guarantees we get these domain values that do have some distance from the limit point c. They're all guaranteed some distance from the limit point c, so none of the xn's are equal to c. So again, our hypothesis applies, and thus the sequence of the images of the terms of this sequence xn has to converge to L. The f of xn sequence has to converge to L, but we see clearly it cannot. This is a contradiction, and thus our contradiction assumption must have been false. And so indeed, the limit of f of x as x approaches c must equal L as desired. And that completes the proof of this really handy theorem. To restate the theorem once more in very simple and plain terms, if you consider a function and a limit point of the domain, let's call that limit point C, if it's the case that for every sequence in the domain that converges to C, the sequence of images of those terms converges to L, that is equivalent to the function's limit as X approaches C actually being L. So we can tie the limit of a function together with the limit of sequences, which is really handy. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this proof, and I'll see you next time. Reindeer to pick me up and slowly get to know me. We'll unwrap each other until we're never lonely. Hello. Okay.